if they win this game, I put it in the pantheon with Miami in 03 and Alabama in 14 that, that you know, th these are program type wins. If you come back from that type of a humbling defeat, worst loss at home in 23 years, worst loss in the series in 44 years, if you come back from that and are able to go down and beat the number one team, this is the same as beating Miami off their great run, the same as beating Alabama when you'd never done it before. Um, that this this would be akin to all of that. And uh, then, in my mind, they'd be playing with house money. Um, you know, and then I don't think they'll have any problem if it's Michigan getting up to play that next game, considering the fact Michigan, you know, rubbed their nose in it. And play. I mean, we're going to be hearing about flag planning for uh, 10 days. Let, let's just hope we have to listen to all the talk about flag planning for 10 days. If it comes to that, we'll all be happy. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll be a welcome distraction. Yes. Um, the the criticism, I think, obviously, depending on how this game goes and the type of loss that may happen, I think criticizing somebody for making the playoffs, I, I think we need to calm down about that. Like, you've made the playoffs. You're one of four teams. You're one of the four best teams. Should you be uh, – should people be irate about that? I don't think so. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Um also, like I, I remember the the forty one fourteen loss to Florida, and people saying, "Gosh, this is gonna set Ohio State back like five years." You know, how, how do you overcome this? And Ohio State was in the championship game the next year, based uh, quite a large part on opinions of people, and still, you know, like it, it, they were there the next year. So, I think even more so nowadays, like you can have a bad loss and in the playoffs. And it doesn't really matter because next year you can earn your way right back in and you can set the narrative. Look how quick it, it took, uh, look how quickly Michigan Jim Harbaugh turned the narrative on Ohio state. Like it took just one game to become now, now we are better than Ohio state. And then the second game absolutely proves it. And so these things can turn quickly. That's why I think, um, you know, getting upset because you don't win it all. I, I think that's, um, that is Alabama fans level of spoil. Like that's, that's somewhere that it's not, it's not healthy to be there. I'll just say that. Can I, can I throw in this parallel? This was kind of an interesting thing to me. People remember the golden state warriors over the last 10 years have just, you know, kind of been the preeminent team in the NBA. They haven't won it every year, but they're, you know, they're there quite a bit. And uh, in about, as I look it up in 2017 and 2018, well, they won three out of four. They won 2015 against Cleveland, then Cleveland won in 2016. Then they beat Cleveland in 2017 and 2018. And they, I thought their 2018 team was probably about as good as any team in NBA history. They seemed unbeatable. But then they had some injuries that kind of crept in there, and you thought they were just going to walk to a third straight championship. And lo and behold, here came Toronto out of nowhere, and Toronto just – the last half of that season just took it away from them and took it away from everybody and won it, you know, and they had the best player with Leonard and everything on the planet at that point. And to me, Ohio state feels like they were golden state when they were really, really, really good, but some injuries have crept in, some doubt has crept in and now they've opened the door to let Michigan, Georgia, whoever, uh, you know, take over the top spot in college football. And, uh, you know, I'm saying it in a figurative sense. It just seemed like Ohio State was this dominant force for so long. And now, you know, what's what's going on? I mean, it it, it seemed like for you to complete, they were going to be in the championship game and maybe win it. And now they're just lucky to make the playoff and hoping they don't get blown out by Georgia. So I don't know. It just things things kind of turned quickly and they turned when we weren't really what weren't really looking kind of type thing. When Kevin mentions uh, people out there that say Ohio State should be playing with house money because of Georgia being the dominant team and the consensus number one and all of that, I don't know that this program, based on the expectations of the fans, has been playing with house money since Jim Tressel went to Michigan and won in 01. I don't know that this program's played with house money since then. I think the expectations have been win national championships and uh, own the Big Ten. And, you know, in terms of Ryan Day, uh, you know, you could kind of parallel if they if they go to 
Atlanta and lose by three scores, maybe parallel his uh, tenure at Ohio State, like a Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, who uh, you know, repeatedly won the conference, lost playoff games, and um, usually in blowout fashion. But I don't even know if that's a parallel because I think the expectations and deservedly so at Ohio State or even, you know, some Oklahoma fans might get after me because that's a great all time blue blood program. But I don't even know if the expectations at Oklahoma uh, come close to Ohio State. Well, they come close, but I don't think they're on the level just because of the recruiting and um, because of the magnitude of the Michigan game and the expectation and demand to own the conference and then beyond. Yeah, I think the Oklahoma teams you're talking about plateaued and kind of that parallel I have with Golden State. They reached a point where they plateaued and they weren't getting getting better anymore, and some of it was due to the injuries. I just wonder if Ohio State's plateaued and, and you know, has taken a half step back even from being a top two program in the country or top three. Uh, maybe they're not up there anymore. I don't know.